God amazes me that God in eternity knew you, formed you, made you, loved you, sought you, saved you. You didn't do this. He did this. That's Monday on Truth For Life. Welcome to another great broadcast of Picking Up the Habit with Brother Tim and Frady here on WPMH 100.1 The Lighthouse. Picking Up the Habit explores biblical topics, culture, and the world around biblical perspective. Join us today and give us a call at 757-488-5299. And now, here is Brother Tim and Frady. Hey, everybody. This is Brother Tim, and I'm sitting here in our studios in Chesapeake. You're listening, Picking Up the Habit, here on the Lighthouse Radio Network. We're here every Wednesday from 5.30 to 6.30 to carry on those discussions that you would like to have. If there's something you would like to talk about, our number is 488-5299-757-488-5299. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Give us a call. I'm going to take a second here to recalibrate. I'm going to ask our producer to put a commercial on for a second, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Lighthouse Radio Network here on 1270 AM, 96.9 and 100.1 FM. We'll be right back. Life can be full of risks. One thing you shouldn't take a risk with ever is your family's health insurance. If you're self-employed or you now need affordable health insurance, you need to make this free call right now and see how the health insurance helpline can help you get it. We specialize in helping the self-employed and people just like you that need affordable health insurance to get it. We have short and long-term health insurance plans and some even cover dental, vision, and prescription drugs. Don't take a risk with your family's health insurance, it's not worth it. If you're self-employed or now need affordable health insurance, call right now and learn for free how to get it. Listen, affordable health insurance plans for everyone just like you are a free phone call away. So give us a shout right now. 800-761-7341. 800-761-7341. 800-761-7341. That's 800-761-7341. Hey, everybody, this is Brother Tim. Sorry about that. We had to do a little recalibration. This is the Lighthouse Radio Network, and I'm Brother Tim with the Picking Up the Habit show. We're here every Wednesday from 5.30 to 6.30 to carry on the conversations you'd like. Our number is 757-488-5299. That's 757-488-5299. If you have something you want to talk about, I'd like for you to give us a call. Brady and I have got two topics we've been tossing around all week. Actually, kind of three. three. First one was Chesapeake. Oh, we and got the yeah, return yeah. of our new student group. Yeah, yeah, um, they're 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 mad as could be. Um, yeah, for, I guess I could say mad as heck. Yeah, 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 you can't say that because they don't believe in it. Um, <laughs> which is weird. Yeah, I know. Um, in Chesapeake, folks, is we have the uh, uh, student club. That is the satanic club that's trying to uh, get through sc- to. Uh, so funny, they're saying they're not even trying to get in schools anymore. It was actually they're meeting in a library. Oh, well, if anyone's wondering what's going on, it, there's a, a, a you probably most of you probably heard of this a satanic after school program. Right. Um, the city has made some new safety changes. Right. Um, where and uh, I guess the organization did not meet those new. So yeah, they they were supposed to have a meeting at um, a library. Well, I don't have a problem with them meeting at the library. Yeah, well, well I mean, it's, it's also. Well, I summer. mean, after all, if they're going to meet at the library with their girlfriends and the drag queens and all that, that seems a perfect place for them all to gather together since they're going to be there for all eternity. No, I guess they plan on going back to the school they're at, but it's summer. So, but either way, oh. the city the city has made new guidelines for safety and. Um, to keep everyone safe. And well, we'd they'd... like to thank the city, but as long as they're going to um, allow their girlfriends to be there, I don't see why the two of them can't get together since they're going to be that way for all eternity. You know, let them share the same space. They're going to be sharing it later. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Probably not good. No, no, probably dang, not going to get a phone call on that one too. Four, so. Seven five seven four eight eight five two nine nine. If you want to call about the Satanic Club, um, we also yesterday was the feast of Saint Mary, yes, and we have never ever talked about Mary on the show, um, and we haven't talked about quote unquote Maryology, um, the study of Mary and why she is revered. Um, by certain faith groups that are Christian. So there's Catholic. a topic there. Which this is you, just really one. Which ca you, ca Catholic. <laughs> which ones? Greek? I guess I'll Roman, I, I guess I'll guess. Well, I, okay, I, but it's it, it, Anglican? All, all of the uh, well, there's more than one group. You can pick on one all you I'm want not trying to pick, I'm trying to pick on all yeah, of them. Yeah, you do. You you have it you have it out for one. I have not. I don't have any I love yeah. I have do not have it out for any religious group out there. Yes, you do. I They're have called some, satanic. Well, that's not a religious group, they said. <laughs> well, they, they said, said it, they we said, believe it is. They say they are not well, the satanic after school program will tell you they are they do they are not religious and they don't even believe in Satan. I, I, I don't know how you have a Satan club. They, but that's <laughs> the point is that you don't believe what they're saying. Anyway, yeah. folks, you can call us on that. You can call us about Mary or the other thing that Freddie and I have been really, really tossing around. I thought we talked about Mary more than this other one. Is Vodi. Oh, yeah. Is how do you pronounce his name? Vodi Beecham? Uh Vodi Beecham. I I'm I honestly I don't know. Vodi okay. Vodi. Um he has been recently in a number of Christian uh, papers, yeah, um, websites, about a comment that he made when he was having a discussion with the Babylon Bee podcast regarding the movie The Chosen. Well, it's a TV series, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's on, actually, you can get it, I think, on most places amazon primes where i've seen it yeah i mean yeah i've, I've seen it on amazon prime there's like i think some seasons on netflix yeah um, there's actually a, a chosen um app that you can see the show yeah. yeah so the question was was vadi was quoted as saying something on babylon b He's, bot podcast which was he said that he draws a line um when it comes to watching the chosen because um it violates 2C. 2C is an acronym of the second commandment. But before we even get into that, Frady and I were trying to find out if this was because Babylon B is the Christian, or excuse me, the conservative satirical website. Was this satire or was this actually a sincere quote? And I have to tell you, folks, I spent a good couple of hours researching that um podcast and uh, it looks like it's supposed to be serious discussions dallas jenkins was on it um uh, uh jeremy was it jeremy johnson is that his name yeah was on it i mean there's been some really good conservative viewpoints on there and so I really wondered if it was a sincere comment. And then when I read it about the Christian post, um, Christian Christianity today, all had articles about it. It really led me to believe a little bit more that it might be sincere. I mean, they're mostly covering Dallas Jenkins response more than the, the comment. Oh, but actually, yeah. no, are they... there are articles all over. there are just him. That, that they're trying to find out um, or just spreading the word. And it's led us to have some uh, discussions at the pantry. Again, our number is 757-488-5299, 757-488-5299. And what Vadi is saying is in uh, Exodus 20, verse 4, Reading from the NIV, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below, which to me kind of really, really, really rocked my world because I just thought we weren't supposed to make graven image of God. 
And that's what happened when they did that uh, golden calf. But I also did a study and looking at this first, if you look at it in the KJV, it says thou shalt not make any or make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or is or that is in the water under the earth. So NIV says image. So now we are running into paintings, photographs, sketch, drawings, not just crafted, sculpted images. So there's a variety of different interpretations, but what Bobby was saying is that that's what a movie was. And therefore he would say not only is the chosen but also um the other well what's the other one that was uh passion of christ should not have been made because I'm, it was also images of god go ahead I, i'm i think we're oversimplifying that verse with something like the chosen what I do you mean oversimplifying they I, say they got a picture of god up there of course, there are a picture of God up there, but I, the point is, you're not supposed to worship. I don't see anyone worshiping the chosen. Yes, no one's. No if one's. You read some of the articles out there. People are responding and saying, you know, and and this is true. Think about this. If you don't know what God, how do how how do I want to explain this? What's the argument between why why should we have excuse me what's the argument between a white Jesus and an ethnic Jesus? Why is the white tossed about as incorrect? Cuz Jesus isn't from Jesus was Middle Eastern. Right. So there was not white people so as you would say. So people like, are learning that this is an incorrect this correct. isn't what Jesus looked like. Correct. Same image with chosen. That's not what Jesus okay. looked like. That's an artist interpretation. But wouldn't okay? Let me throw this out there. Then wouldn't the church be the same thing? Then what do you mean? Well, wouldn't if if watching the chosen is violating the second commandment just by watching it? Wouldn't uh, making a church is, as an idol? Like we're, we're required to go to church? No, 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 not the church. But if you did a crucifix, yes. What would be the if difference? you did stained glass, well, a church is just four walls in a building. Correct. But that's my point. But we're, we're we're told to go. Like make, you make a big push to go to that building. Yeah, but what I'm pretty that you got me totally lost, buddy. What's that got to do with the graven image of God? Isn't that's what the church is? Is you're supposed to go to? It's a great. It's an image of. It's a some symbol of God. No, a cross is it's a not symbol of God. No, it didn't say a symbol of God. It said any graven image or likeness of. So because they have Jesus. Yes, that's it. Not because the so rest of it. If a church has a picture of Jesus on a that, cross, that would be every wrong. church in the in the world has that. No, not every church does. Hopefully, every church has a picture of Jesus in their no, church. No, not every church does. There are many churches out there that just have a cross and nothing with Jesus on it because that old adage is off the cross. The entire point of Christianity is because of Jesus. Is because, but the issue is, do you want somebody? in their mind, worshiping a false image of him, which is why the white versus the Asian or the Aramaic. Our number 757-488-5299, 757-488-5299. And in the articles that I've read, there are plenty of people who have admitted that now that they have watched The Chosen, when they are praying, to God, in their mind, they're seeing the image of Jesus that is portrayed on the chosen. I can see that. And that's where... There's a, there's a line from the movie he was in that I still think of every day. What? Because, you know, the character who was... um The character... The, uh, the, um, the, the gentleman who plays Jesus in The Chosen played Lonnie Stevens in um, Jesus Revolution. Um, have you, did you see that movie? Yeah. You didn't see Jesus Revolution? Yeah, just keep going. Okay, either way, um, trail. He he 
he he looks like that. It's, it's a different character, but he plays Lonnie Stevens. He's basically helping the hippie revolution back in the 60s. Um, and there was this one scene where the gentleman who plays Matthew in The Chosen was also in the movie. And he goes, are you Jesus? And he goes, no, I'm Lonnie. Because they were referencing The Chosen. And every time I, 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 every time I watch The Chosen now, I think of that. See, well, that's just it. So this show, The Chosen, is influencing people's perceptions of okay Jesus. Now, at the same time that we're dealing with this, this was the same reason given in the 70s why Jesus Christ Superstar and Godspell were also frowned upon. The exact same thing, that they are portraying Jesus and it's a false image. And when I read this, folks, one of the things that really makes me wonder about this is if you listen to NIV, listen to what it says. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven. No angels, no God, no Jesus, or the earth beneath. Um, trees any animals or in the waters below fish dolphins these things are, are, are i don't know if if we're just not supposed to make idols and then that takes me back to the issue where people are not wanting their fi pictures taken because there are people who say they should never have their pictures taken and it it, it just caused me to think and folks when you understand the purpose of our show is to ha have thoughtful conversations that inspire change that build the kingdom that's what we're to have on this show thoughtful conversations that inspire change that build the kingdom and this really caused me to think we've got a caller we actually had two so we're going to start with milton we got milton on the line he's got a comment hey milton what would you like to add to the conversation hey oh first of all good evening gentlemen how y'all doing today fine okay yeah i just wanted to um just answer the question especially um, what was the Exodus chapter 20 uh -huh. about the the verse about that graven image? Right. Actually, it, it, what Body Bottom was saying about the graven image and how he Milton? saw the line. He, yes. Real quickly, say his name again because I think I got it wrong. Body Bottom. Body Bottom. Thank you. Continue with your thought, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, he's actually telling the truth where he's saying he um, will draw the line as far as watching shows that supposedly the book supposed to be looking like Jesus. And in accordance to that verse out of Exodus chapter 20, that would be considered a graven image. Like you were saying, you gave an example of the television series, The Chosen. I, um, like you were saying, I think it is on Amazon Prime, but I know the CW, I think they just started playing that show. Um, other examples will be the Passion of the Price, like you were saying, the, um, the film that Mel Gibson had directed some years ago. Right. Um, there was a, um, a comedy show. I can't think of it right offhand. They had like um, a white Jesus on there. Um, they were making fun of Jesus. So, so the answer to your question is: if it's a graven image, yes, it is because, and this is just my opinion, and uh, just in accordance to what that verse is saying, we're. You, like you say, you're not supposed to make any kind of graven images to include him. And the only reason, the only way you'll know what he actually looks like is when is we're up there. When you transition from him, when you pass away, and you're facing him, that right. will be the only way. Hey, guess what? That's what he looks like. Uh, yep. And I got it. I got it, Milton. And thank you a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, all right. Evening. You too. Thank you for listening. All right. So there's one. That body. Oops, we lost our caller there. Give us a call back. Her, her name was Sharon. Sharon, give us a call back. 488-5299. It so I wonder. Can you do 
because that that takes away any visuals. It takes away any visuals. Stained glass that has been done for centuries. Illuminations, paintings that have been going on for centuries. All of those would 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 violate that second commandment. I totally agree. We got Sharon back on the line now. Hey, Sharon. Thank you for listening Hi. and calling back. What would you like to add? Well, I just don't think it is um, worshiping an, an idol or graven image. I think that the passion and the um, chosen are just vehicles, like they're just educational things. They're getting the word out. And I don't think that people are worshiping. It doesn't those say shows. anything about worshiping, though. In Exodus, it just says you shall not make. It doesn't say you shall not worship. It says you shall not make for yourself a carved image or an image. Okay. Oh, well, okay. I mean, do we want to have that conversation on how many things Exodus says we can't do? That, well, we, that see, we do? That would be a point that I would be willing to, to entertain. But I think Sharon's got a really good thing. I think they are visuals that educate us. I agree. I mean, you, we we had a conversation. I love I love the chosen. I, I love to the, reach lost people. Correct. Yes. I I think there I I literally think there are people who have probably come to. I can't quote that. I don't have numbers, of course, but I want to believe that there are people who have come who have come probably to know Christ based off these shows, these movies, um, and I and and th there are shows out there like the comedy. Like I know a comedy show he was talking about, and there are shows out there who make fun of religion, and but certain shows like the Chosen and the Passion of Christ. They do a really good job. I, 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 and Brady, I agree with did you. Did you see the passion? I did. I've seen it. Multiple Sharon, times. you saw the passion, right? Um, no, I didn't. And, and this why is so not? cowardly that I thought I couldn't, I couldn't take it. So exactly. that's why I didn't watch it. And isn't that horrible? No, 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 no. That's exactly. I couldn't do it. The passion makes what Jesus went through more realistic, more understandable. When you see it, and I've only seen it once because it was so traumatic that that man, the son of God, gave up everything I, I've to seen, go through that. I've seen that show multiple times and it still turns my stomach. That we showed scenes um this past Easter at my church. We showed we showed scenes during our Easter service um of it and it still turned like it it's yeah, it's I would definitely recommend it to anybody. But yeah. Do not watch I, it I, with kids. Wait, yeah, I don't watch it with children. <laughs> yeah, right. I I want to watch it. I need to watch it. It's just I I, I just I can't bear to see him go through it, but he did. So. Well, I would suggest if you're going to watch it, get a friend or a watch party, and before you even start, open with prayer, watch it, and end in prayer. Okay. Okay. All right. God bless you. I hope you do it All soon. Right. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you for listening. I mean, that's... She brings up a good point, though. I, you know, I, I agree with that. Like, it's, it, I think it's a vehicle. But back to what I was saying about Exodus, that's a major argument to have about Exodus. Because, again, as anyone who knows, I mean, you, not that you people might not know, but you should know. Our number, 757-488-5299, 757-488-5299. Go ahead. Um, I mean, Exodus is, I feel, what the rules for the Israelites at the time. We all know that or should know that. Um, if you don't know that, read Exodus. Um, so, yes, I'm not saying the new that we all i know it's that argument back and forth the new right but like i know jesus said that he did not come to dismiss the you know the time it came up i get all that part but okay you need I, to finish that thought I you know I, you know you know i can't you know where i see, come that's from that's the problem people I'm, are listening and we got to complete this for them I'm, I'm trying to i i i don't i'm not with this whole it violates the second commandment okay. thing. i think well here's where it is folks some people believe and i happen to be one of them we're no longer under the law, the law meaning the Old Testament. Totally agree. If we were under the law, you would not be eating shrimp. Correct. You would not be enjoying bacon, sausage, ham, or as I've recently rediscovered, any breakfast sandwich. That Why does every breakfast sandwich have pork in it? I don't know. Maybe it's a Virginia thing. I don't know. It is everywhere. But the point being is that we're under grace that we have the Ten Commandments, 
and they've been reiterated by Jesus as the two. Um, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind, and we shall love thy neighbor as thyself. And I think we've got Thomas on the line. We have Thomas on the line. Thomas, what would you like to add to the conversation? I'm kind of thinking along with Brady, and I'm trying to help him complete his thought. Okay. Uh, the Holy Spirit kind of draws us and draws the law out of us, so to speak. He kind of draws us toward the law in Christ. In other words, Christ is always drawing us toward righteousness. Christ is the fulfillment of every law. He's the, the perfection of every law. And he kind of draws us there. We can't escape it. As a Christian, you cannot escape it. When you do something that you know breaks his law, it kind of breaks your heart. What did I do that for? I shouldn't have done that. And the Holy Spirit's turning you back. So when we repent, we're actually doing righteousness. When we turn away from our sin, we're doing righteousness. Righteousness is the fulfillment of the law through Christ, and and it's it's just a wonderful thing that what what God has done for us. Thank you, Thomas. I appreciate it. Brady, did you get that? Unfortunately, I was talking on the phone with. We'll the, have to listen to it on replay. Thanks, Thomas. We appreciate it. We got another line caller on the line. No, oh well. Okay. All right, folks. That so, was Dean. Dean, call back. I I think I'm messing something up. Right. I have a second call. But Dean, give us a call back. Our number is 757-488-5299, 757-488-5299. I think it gives pause because there is also, do you remember in the Old Testament when the Hebrews were bitten by the serpent? Yes. And the... um. Levites were instructed to create a brass image that had the twisted serpents on it, which leads us to the medical symbol for healing. Right. Caduceus. Correct. Okay. But that wasn't about Jesus. That was the. It doesn't say. See, you guys keep reading into this. I, the I, verse doesn't say anything about God. It doesn't say anything about Jesus. It doesn't say. Anything other than thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in water under the earth. I mean, if we want to push that envelope, we can almost say it like, then this isn't a push that because the show's about Jesus. Jesus, I mean, I know Jesus is God. Please no, don't call me. No, I know. Call say it this. doesn't say anything about God. It's just saying we aren't supposed to make any image of anything. So we just can't make anything. That's what I said five minutes ago. So I, I don't know. No I'm, trees, no birds. But it, see, it specifically says an idol. An idol. No, it doesn't say an idol. Exodus 24. Oh, I'm reading. Okay, I think I'm reading Isaiah. You're reading people's excerpts of it, expounding it. It doesn't say anything about an idol. It just says no graven image. Whether it's an amplified, the English Standard, the King JV, KJV, or the NIV, they all say image or graven image or carved image. And when you think about anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, and I'm assuming they mean beneath heaven, or that is in the water under the earth, that covers every single creature, plant, rock. It causes oh, yeah, there are, one to think. There are some translations that say idol, and the New Living Translation says idol. Okay, again, consider the source. Our number is 757 488 5299. 757 488 5299. It is that time. So give us a call. We got to do station identification. We're here on the Lighthouse Radio Network. We're WPMH, AM 1270, 96.9, 100.1 FM. This is Brother Tim and Frady. I'm picking up the habit. We're going to be right back. You're listening to The Lighthouse, W245CK Suffolk, W261DI Norfolk, and WPMH Newport News. 
It's almost that time, and your local Boys and Girls Club is now open for registration. Known for the best youth development in Southeast Virginia, their mission is to enable all young people, especially those who need them the most, to reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens. With nine clubs in seven cities, Virginia Beach, Suffolk, Norfolk, Portsmouth, Chesapeake, Accomack County, and Franklin. The Boys and Girls Clubs offer numerous programs that center around three priority outcomes, academic success, good character and leadership, and healthy lifestyles. Programs such as DIY STEM, Power Hour, Triple Play, Smart Girl, Passport to Manhood, and much more. After school programs start as early as August 28th. To find out more, please visit www.bgcseva.org or call 757 853 5632. That's 757 853 5632. The, the Boys, Boys and Girls, Girls Clubs, Clubs of Southeast, Southeast Virginia. Virginia. Great, Great futures start here. here. The Lighthouse 100.1 FM is your station for Bible-based broadcasting from some of the most prominent teachers and evangelists in the Christian community. Listen daily to hear David Jeremiah, James Dobson, Charles Stanley, Greg Laurie, and many more, as well as many local pastors. To get a full lineup of all the programs we offer, visit our website at mylighthouseradio.com. The Lighthouse 100.1 FM, pointing the way in Hampton Roads. Mold, trash, rodents, snakeskin, even deceased animals. No, this isn't a Halloween shopping list. It's what might be under your house in your crawl space. Schedule a free crawl space inspection with the crawl space company and find out what's in your crawl space. Call 757 394 3494 to schedule your free inspection or visit thecrawlspacecompany.net. So, do you know what's in your crawl space? <laughs> Actual client review of Hartman Dentistry. I just want to say that um, I just went to Dr. Hartman, and she is absolutely wonderful. What did you think when you walked in? Did it just feel like it was a relaxing place to be? Yes, it's very nice, very clean, very bright. You're not sitting in a room with just four walls. Uh, the room that I was in, you could see outside. Did you have a wait before you walked in? Um, I was there maybe 15 minutes before I got into the office, and so I got into my chair, and then maybe another 30 minutes um, while the um, technician you know, did x-rays and all. And so are you going to go back and get your teeth fixed the way she says? I'm going to try. I am going to try because I really trust her. And, and the only reason I went is because you thought so highly of her. Uh, I got to tell you, I'm in love. <laughs> Give Hartman Dentistry a call at 757-873-3407. Everybody, this is Brother Tim sitting here with Brady. You're listening, picking up the habit here on the Lighthouse Radio Network. We want to give a shout out to Hartman Dentistry. You just heard that wonderful testimony from one of our listeners. Folks, I got to tell you, and I have told you for years now, Hartman Dentistry has been supporting this program for a long time, and they are so worth going to. They will make you want and do smile again. Check them out. Dr. Vanessa Hartman, if you have not heard me sing her praises before, is not only a DDS, she's a PhD of dentistry. She has gone both routes. She is also a professor of dentistry. She also does dental research. She has her own lab in-house. You can walk in that morning with no teeth, and walk out that evening with a brand new girl. <laughs> you are proof. I sure I am. Yeah. I walked in. Folks, I got to tell you, I had my teeth pulled out because they were so bad. I had nothing in the uppers. But by the time I left, I had brand new teeth. I can verify that. And a lot of people have commented on my smile. And it's all to Dr. Vanessa Hartman. You need to check her out. They've got all the latest technology whether it's three day, 3D x-ray imaging, painless, I mean literally painless, and I've had to have some major repair work on some of my other teeth. 
you need to see Hartman Dentistry. Call Dr. Vanessa Hartman at 757-873-3407, 757-873-3407. Give them a call. Get on their schedule. I don't care where you are in Hampton Roads. Once you get there, once you are seen, you're going to realize it's worth the drive and it was worth the wait. Check them out. Hartman Dentistry. They are located in Newport News on Jefferson Boulevard, right by George, nope, right by, yep, George Washington Highway. Route 17, where Warwick or Jefferson meets. Again, their number is 757-873-3407. Now, folks, I got to tell you, we've been talking about Vadi Beecham. I believe that was his correct name. Vadi Beecham made a comment during a interview on the podcast of Bamblon B. He was commenting how the um, uh, the the excuse me the uh, chosen violated his understanding of the second commandment. I believe we've got a phone call. Who's on the line? We got Victorian. And hey, Victorian. Go ahead. Hey, hey, gentlemen. Good evening. Brother, Father Tim, and Brother Frady. Here, here's, here's what I will tell you in regards to what the scripture says and what we shouldn't do. Okay. Of course, it says we should not make any graven image um, in the likeness, things and bugs, beneath. We don't know what, uh, I'm walking from work, so uh, excuse me. Uh, we don't know what Jesus or God looks like. I know that there are descriptions in regards to his likeness, but once again, that's a metaphorical description. And we also have to remember that when we're speaking of Jesus for God. We're speaking of him in the spirit. And we're not speaking of him in mortal flesh. That being said, I think it was a, a term, I, I think it was mentioned earlier that when we look at things, you know, why is there a white Jesus or a ethnic Jesus or a black Jesus or whatever it might be? Folks do that to show other people um, superiority and a way of keeping them in bondage because if we be realistic and I've said this before to other people Jesus when he was here as a man was a Jew now I don't know what traditional Jews look like but Jesus was a Jew he came from the tribe of Jews. We read all that in the scripture. However, what we should dwell on is that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world. It had nothing to do with me being white or black, Chinese, Mexican, Russian, or Ukrainian. It basically led to him dying for the sake of the whole world so that we all can be saved from the penalty of sin. Uh, now, as for these movies, Victoria, yeah. we are getting very, very hard to hear because you're in a cross breeze somewhere. Yeah, you're breaking up. Yeah, okay. Thank you for calling. I appreciate it. We'll uh, try and get back with you, okay? Yep. All right, thanks. So, I think Vertorian's got a, a, a legitimate point. I agree. Everyone who's been calling at 488-5299, 757-488-5299, we don't know what Jesus looks like. We don't. Um, in, in fact, I'll be real honest. Even though we knew he was a Jew, even though we knew he was from the Middle East, um. What did people from the Middle East look like 2,000 years ago? True story. Uh, I, I mean, we don't even know. I mean, we look at old man 
and they've got skulls and then they put clay on it and says that's what they used to look like. We don't know that that's factual. I do know in my heart of hearts that once we see God face to face, we will know he is God. Oh, of course. We will know. What are you going to say? Oh, no, I was just, you know, I, I was reading the scripture more, this, the Exodus 24, um, which is the scripture we've been talking mostly about. And, and uh, I don't know why I look at it. I'm thinking we're not, it's not even referencing earth. Like I'm reading the King James version and, and it says, thou shall not make the, any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above heaven above, or, or that is in the earth beneath. Okay, earth beneath, that's us. Earth. Is it, is it though? Beneath heaven. Earth beneath heaven. Okay. Not the lower portion I, of I earth. Know. I'm still I'm still having issues. Okay. Or that is in water under the earth. See, I, I, and I understand that because at first I was thinking neither heaven nor hell, but then where does the water fall into play? And does hell come into play? I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. It, it's a very uh, that's a good question. Like, because where's hell? I mean, it's you know, we got Dean back on the line. By the hey, way, hey Dean, thank you for calling back, sir. What would you like to add to the conversation? Can I speak now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. First of all, the gentleman that made the statement, he already told you that he's confused, right? So his confusion is to try to confuse the body of Christ. First of all, those movies. They been claimed to be a, a witnessing tool for people to get born again to get saved. Now, when we stick with the scripture, we go back to Exodus, the children of Israel erected a calf, and they said that this calf is what brought us out of Egypt, not God. So anybody that look at these movies, the Passion of Christ or the Chosen, they're not worshiping those movies. Y'all understand what I just said? Yeah, well, very much, Dean, but nobody was saying they worship the movies and the calf incident he, happened. No, no, he was saying that there's something wrong with those movies. I Body mean, Beecham, Body Beecham himself said that he would not watch them because he felt it violated the second commandment. It had said, and the second commandment doesn't say anything about worshiping. It says, but thou that's, shalt that's, not That's what make, they did. They worship. But that's they not. That's okay, what God was upset. Dean, but see, the point is, is that these commandments were written before the golden calf incident. It didn't happen golden calf, then the second commandment. The commandments were written before the golden calf was formed. I understand that. Okay, so. This wasn't written in reaction, and we're not talking about worshiping. The second commandment strictly says, thou shalt not make any graven image or image. And that's what Vadi Beecham is saying, that he himself, he's only making the comment for himself, feels that to watch the chosen would violate the second commandment. But that's not true. It doesn't violate the second commandment uh, because you, no one is worshiping that movie nowhere in the bible does it say you have to worship the image it just says you can't make one if you read exodus 20 verse 4 it says thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or like that's, that's of the anything. purpose of making the image so they can worship the image it Don't doesn't you know say that, that. You can read your intentions into it, Gene, Dean, if you would like to, but I read what's written. All I'm doing is quoting what the Bible said, what God was mad because they worship that image that they made. I agree with you. And the later part, after this was written, after this happened, he did get angry with the Hebrews for worshiping a golden calf. That is correct. It, it wasn't just them worshiping the golden calf, was them. And been worshiping anything other than him. I'm not going to argue that. So there's nothing wrong with those, those movies. Okay. There's no one who watches the movies, passion or none of that, they're not worshiping the movies. I understand, Dean. I understand your viewpoint. Thanks for calling. I appreciate it. Uh huh. All right. Bye bye. Thank you for calling. Hope you continue to listen and call again. 
Our number, folks, is 757-488-5299. 757-488-5299. Now, there is one part of the second commandment I, I think we're missing. Which is? It says at the end of it, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. I think we're skipping that part. You mean part. verse 5? Or verse 20, verse 5? No, uh, well, yeah. Okay, I'll look into that there just a second. Um, I The way I see it written is two different ways, but 24, verse 5, uh, you shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord God, am a jealous God, punishing the children. Okay. I mean, that's that's that. I think we're skipping that part. I, the whole... I would get gather you're right, but we got Vertorian back, he's got a much better connection. Hey, Vertorian, thank you for calling. What do you got to add to the conversation? Okay, so I don't know all of what we heard from you before, but what I was simply saying is you know, we don't know what God looks like, um, right now because he's a spirit, and being that God is a spirit, a lot of folks want to read into uh, making him white, black, whatever the color is. And like I was saying before, and I'm, like I said, I don't know if you heard it or not, but it's basically to subjugate or keep people bonded. God is white, so therefore you're worshiping a white God. God is black, so everyone should be, no. God is a spirit, and it says, and those that worship him should worship him in spirit and truth. It doesn't say that he is a certain color or anything of that nature. And he also, when Jesus came, he was of the tribe of Judah, but he died for everyone, regardless of our nationality, regardless of our tongue, whatever it may be, that's what he died for. In regards to making any graven image, I am in agreement. We should not have a image of Jesus Christ on a cross on our chest, because then we're saying that this is a, this is what Jesus looks like. This is what, and some people do, well, this is the Jesus that I worship. But how do we know that's what he looked like? You've basically made an image which you are now representing this to be, and this is what you're worshiping. You can't worship a thing. If you're going to worship a thing, you might as well become, and I hate to say it, become a Buddhist and get the little the fat man and put some fruit around the table for him. That's an image. We are, and you're absolutely correct in what the scripture said. God said, don't create any graven images. Because he had already established with the uh, first commandment that we were supposed to worship him and him alone. Uh, Brother Tim, real quick, last point. Uh -huh. When they were in the last point, when they were in the wilderness and they were bit by the serpents, the fiery serpent. Yep, we brought God that told up. told them, he said, Moses, I want you to build a serpent. He says, and put it, a brass serpent and put it on the staff. He says, and when they look up to see the serpent that bit them, basically the brass staff, he says, everyone who will look on it will be saved. The serpent, they had got to the point where they were about to worship that serpent. And God said, no. If you also remember, they were about to worship um, the golden the calf ephod and all yep. that stuff. Yep. And God said, no, worship me, not the thing that you see. Totally agree. Totally agree. Thank you, Vertorian. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Folks, our number is 757-488-5299. Now, Freddie, back to your point. Two Which, verses, right? Yep. The first part still stands. You shall not make. The next verse is, and you shall not bow down to or worship them. There are two conditions. Don't make it. And don't bow down and worship. It doesn't say don't make it if you are going to bow down and worship. It doesn't say that. I, I don't, I'm still. It's I, two I, I, separate I, actions. Don't make. Don't bow second down and second worship. Commandment. That's not the third. I mean, the second commandment is it's, verses four and five. I agree with you, but it's right. two actions. Do not make it. Do not bow down and worship as opposed to. Do not make it if you're going to bow down and worship. It's not a condition, folks. Right now, I'm kind of a get a little head a bit because uh, Freddie's answering the phone, so therefore he can't uh, make an argument back. So I want to give him a chance to come back to that. So, 
Um, our number is 757-488-5299. Lots so, of callers today. Yeah. Dean called back. Yeah. He said again, just to remind you, that the reason he said do not make it because he did not want us to worship it. I am not arguing that, but it is not conditional. It's Technically, not they the were way all, it was written. They were all violating the second commandment, but that, everything that's they do. exactly what I'm saying. Like every, I am reevaluating but what okay, here's my, my question. entire practice. Uh, okay, let's let's go with the, the, the poster right here. I'm agreeing with you. So why would okay here's I my am Freddie, you're you're experiencing my mind blowingness because I am thinking about Every photo that I have that portrays the crucifixion, I am looking at the nativity scene. I am looking at the stations of the cross. I am looking at a crucifix. I am looking at the San Damiano cross. I am looking see, at all these things that are a part of my faith. See, that's even still simplifying this commandment. It says anything. I know that's yeah. my excitement. Right, but you brought up no. I, I'm, you're excited. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not, no, you're missing my point. I am saying you shouldn't have a bunny rabbit. You shouldn't have a turkey. You shouldn't okay. have a duck. So anything. So here, here's my question. Let me let me get it out. God knows the past, the present, and the future. So when he, him, and Moses banged out these commandments, he knew what was going to happen in 2023. He knew we we're going to have this picture right here on the walls. He knew we we're going to have this banner of the lighthouse with these gent these uh, pastors. Uh, okay. So why would he tell Moses that we can't know and that we're going to make these things? Why would he Excuse put Excuse me. Why would he do any of the things he did knowing we were going to sin? Right. Because that's, that's all that would he be. That's he would know we were going to do that. Think about this. What's the biggest downfall of our society right now? Us? No. Social media. Sure, yeah. What yeah, is social media so. full of? Pictures, videos? Exactly. Social media is full of nothing but images of what is in the earth, on the earth, and above. That's all it is. And it is ruining our society. I am telling you, folks, this is really one of those that makes me wonder. Not only have we got it wrong, have we got it right? Yeah. Uh, it, it is something that I am definitely going to be getting into. Our number is 757-488-5299. 757-488-5299. The big issue is, I know, I, I, I'm just saying it, it's totally blowing my mind. And I'm ready for somebody to call up and tell me I'm absolutely wrong. Because if I'm absolutely right, <laughs> I have been violating one of the commandments. His body has been saying, I, 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 I it doesn't, I mean, here's my, wouldn't, doesn't this body not watch TV? Does he not watch pictures? Does he not see video? But see, that's my problem. Is he He's, also violating just because he was limiting it to Jesus? I think we're reading it wrong. Okay. I that's just my personal it. opinion. I think, no, I think the statement should be, I hope we're reading it wrong. Sure. All right, folks, you know, when we came on the air, if it wasn't for Worley's Home Services, we wouldn't be able to be here today. Chuck Worley is the one that got us started. And you can go ahead and see him and his work through Worley's Home Services. You can call them if you've got um, crawl space, electrical, plumbing. You need to give him a call. His numbers 757-356-4117. That's 757-356-4117 and see the wonderful work that they do. Check them out. Now, before we go on, um, I wanted to touch base on a serious note. Um, Freddie. Are we about to talk about I think we're about to talk about? your trip to Ecuador. Yes. So for anyone who's been listening, as you know, we mentioned a few times, um, I was supposed to be going to Ecuador with my church, church at Hampton roads. Uh, Let it go. Uh, I'm going to, um, Dean, if that's you, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you, sir. Um, but we were supposed to go on a mission trip. Uh, we we're supposed to leave on Friday. Um, we we're going to spend a week in Ecuador doing, um, BBSs and stuff. Um, Currently, at this time, there is a presidential election going on. The election is going to be yep. be Saturday. And they um, just had a murder. And this time last week, just after we closed out the show last Wednesday, um, there was a presidential candidate um, who was running for president of Ecuador 
um, he was leaving. Um, actually, I believe it was a school. Um, he was doing a, a campaign rally um, at a school. He was leaving the school and he was assassinated um, right there. Him and a bunch of others um, were, were killed. Um, and uh, of course, and um, just um, last month, a mayor, um, I forget, for what, I think it was this capital. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. But there was a mayor of a city in Ecuador also killed um, a lot of the same reasons. So the um, the prime minister, the current prime minister of Ecuador put um, Ecuador on a current state of emergency for 60 days. A um, couple of things going on. So ultimately, my church made the decision, um, along with the organization in, in Ecuador that we were going through, of course, um, to delay our trip um, 60 days. So, yeah. We will not be going to Ecuador at this time. Unfortunately, I already have prior commitments on those dates in October. So I will not be going at all this year, hopefully next year. Um, so, yeah, if you could pray for Ecuador, um, pray for what's going on, pray for the families um, that have lost loved ones in the past week, pray for that election that's going on. And, you know, of course, we all know in God's will, whatever is meant to happen will happen. Um, and hopefully, it all works out. And of course, for my church, as we navigate the changes. So here's the thing, folks. I wanted to bring this back um, because the issue is, is that we have a church here who had planned to do a VBS with kids in Ecuador. 140 a day. So 450 total. Yeah. Right. And because of the things that are happening, um, the assassination the church canceled that. Now, here's what struck me when I heard that. The enemy has a victory here. If you think about how successful VBSs are, I mean, here we have been talking about graven images. We've been talking about the chosen. We talked about um, images of God, worshiping false images and idols, etc. If you think about all we're talking about, it doesn't compare to these young kids who were going to be introduced to our Savior, Jesus Christ. And now that this church is not going down, there's going to be upwards of 400 kids that will not receive the gospel message at this time. I don't think it means that they will never receive it because the second coming will not happen until everyone's had an opportunity to believe or reject that belief. That's my understanding. And it means a lot to me that church leaders, which were taking youth and adults down there, prayed, met, that this would not be safe. And it brought to mind to me that in the world today, and this is something that, that really, really came out. There was a new book that recently came out. And in that book, it talks about martyrs. And it's a new text, and if you've ever heard of, I believe it was Fox's Book of Martyrs, which was the first listing of martyrs that have existed in our history, this was a continuation of that book. And they list all the martyrs that they could that were of thought. And in this book, it was the new book of Christian martyrs, the heroes of our faith. You we in the United States are not aware of the number of people around the world that are being killed due to their belief in Christ and Christianity. More people are being killed now than ever in this earth's life. There are more people on this planet and more people being killed. And we need to be aware of that. We need to be concerned about that. I'm Brother Tim and Freddie. We're sitting here on picking up the habit here on the Lighthouse Radio Network. We're going to sign off, but God, we ask that you bless these people, bless their families, and draw them closer to you. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.